Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today I'm going to go through my first ever build video with you all. I'm excited to make builds for you all because I have had a few that I have wanted to make for a long time, but with Mark Karth about to release for ESO, I thought I would make a beginner-friendly build that incorporated a set from Mark Karth for tanks. Seriously, y'all, this build is something I'm going to switch my tank to once this DLC drops. This is the easiest and most straightforward tank build I've ever played, I think. This is the Dragonite Thorn in my side build. I do want to mention, if you have any questions about this build, you can always come by my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link is in the description. Also, you can join our Discord and guilds. The links to that are in the description as well. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and heavy attack that bell icon if you want to stay up to date on everything in the channel here. So, tanking. This is something that I would say 90% of the community stays away from playing in ESO. Why? I think it's because tanking is generally looked at as hard, overwhelming, and not fun because you aren't really doing damage. A lot of people like to do damage in this game, to be honest. This build, however, is the most straightforward and simple tank build I have ever played, like I said before, and it will perform very well all the way through most of the content in this game. I think this brings a good mix of tanking, simplicity, and a little bit of flair to make this interesting and enticing to beginners that want to learn how to tank. Before I get into the specifics, I do want to say if you want to learn how to tank in this game though, I have a beginner tanking guide in the description or the top of the screen that goes through everything you need to know about learning the basics of tanking. Make sure to check that out and many other resources on our website at BroadwayGotThis.com. But with my builds, my goal is going to be to have fun with the build, perform well, be easier to use, and be as RP as possible. So you see that I have a cool fashion setup here. I will get into that at the end of the video, but first I'm gonna go into the specifics, how the build works, all the details of the build, and then, like I said, the fashion. So let's go ahead and get into this beginner Dragonite tank build. To be honest with you all, I really wanted to call this a thorn in my ass. Uh, build, but I don't know if I could put that in the title of my YouTube video. So let's go ahead and get into the stats of the build. We have 19k max magicka, we got 584 uh, magicka recovery, we got 45k max health, we got 30, uh, 386 health recovery, we got 20k max stamina, we got 592 stamina recovery, and we got 1335 spell damage, 13% spell critical. We got uh, 1537 weapon damage, 14.4% weapon critical. We got 27.6k spell resistance, 22.5k physical resistance, and uh, 1,780 critical resistance. Then for our attribute points, we are running 44 health, 12 stamina, and 8 magicka. The reason I'm running these attribute points, some tanks run 64 points into health. Some people do like 48 points into health. The reason I chose this balance is really you can kind of play around with it, but I just want to make sure I have at least 40k max health, and I want to make sure that my stamina is at least 20k and my max magicka is at least 18k. The reason being is just because we do have some magicka abilities and we have a few stamina abilities, but a lot of magicka abilities actually with this build, which you will see here in a second. But we want to make sure our health pool is decently high as well because of certain skills that we run in this build. So again, you could probably play around with a few of these attribute points, but I would stick with this. This is very beginner friendly in my opinion. I think you won't run out of resources very often at all with these attribute points. So next I'm going to go into the buff food. The buff food that I run is long fin pasty with melon sauce. This you can buy off guild traders for pretty cheap. You can also make this pretty easily as well. This increases our max health by 4,462, our max magicka and max stamina by 4,105 for two hours. Again, this is something that is a really solid buff food to run uh, for beginners and just in general in the end game. So definitely check that buff food out and use this. And for the race, we are playing Nord because it has insane ultimate generation. And honestly, Nords have amazing beards, and I have a big beard, so I'm tr I, I like playing as Nords. But they are really, really solid choices for this build. You could also play Argonians as well as they have good sustain as well. But Nord is the pick for this build. And the Mundus Stone we are using is the Lord Mundus Stone. This will increase my max health by 22 25 so 2225 these moonstones are spread all around 
on the maps on ESO. You can also find some Munda Stones in our guild hall, and a few of our guild members have a lot of the Munda Stones. You just have to ask through the guild, and you can activate that Munda Stone. But now, let's get into the skills first. We're going to go through kind of what we are using. So your first bar are going to be these skills right here, as you see. We're using Pierce Armor, which is from the Sword and Board line. It's the first skill that you unlock. You have to morph it to Pierce Armor. Um, this thrusts your weapon with dis uh, disciplined precision at an enemy, dealing 2,441 physical damage and taunting them to uh, attack you for 15 seconds. So this is... Uh, your melee taunt basically this is how you get the boss's attention to uh, you know attack you or any of the other enemies to attack you this also inflicts minor breach and major breach on the enemy reducing their physical resistance and spell resistance by 2974 and 5948 for 15 seconds this is pretty simple to use you just go around you use the skill you taunt them and uh, you just do it every 15 seconds now if you're new to tanking I'd say you can overlap this, do it about every 13 seconds because you don't want this to run out because if it runs out on a boss, then it could kill the whole group or you, your group could be in trouble. So make sure you just have this active every 13 to 14 seconds. And you can also use an add-on called Untaunted and Untaunted allows you to see what enemies are taunted and how long they have left to uh, be until they are not taunted. So if you want to check out my add-ons video, I've got it in the description as well. The next ability is Heroic Slash. This is a uh, the second ability that you get from the Sword and Board line. It morphs into Heroic Slash. Um, this deals 2,932 physical damage, inflicting them with minor maim, reducing their damage done by 5% for 12 seconds, which is important uh, because that helps the group out. And you also gain minor heroism, granting you one ultimate every one and a half seconds for 12 seconds. This helps you get more ultimate back, and so this is a solid skill to have as a tank because of the ultimates that we are running. The next skill is Defensive Stance. So this gives you a huge damage shield, this absorbs 14,254 damage for six seconds. This is scaling off your max health. That's why it's important to have high max health because this scales off of it. Uh, but you reflect the next harmful direct damage projectile cast at you. This effect can occur once per cast. While you have this shield equipped though, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10%, which is helpful for us as tanks. And the defensive uh, stance skill comes from the third uh, skill from the sword and board line. So it's pretty easy y'all again. This is morphed into defensive stance um, This is pretty easy uh, To level these it's the first three on this tree The next skill is inner rage. This is your ranged taunt This is how you have a ranged taunt in this game. It's the third skill in the undaunted skill tree So I've got an undaunted beginner guide below in the description in the top of the screen If you want to know how to level and uh, bring your undaunted up and learn about the undaunted This is an important skill tree and I would definitely get this skill but this is basically just a ranged taunt again so if you can't get to a boss or you can't get to an enemy or you gotta you know taunt an ad that is farther away this is very helpful if you can't use pierce armor so this is something i think you really need as a tank in my opinion i think it's uh, necessary but um this also gives a synergy to your allies as well called radiate and it deals 4209 magic damage to them over three seconds and then an additional 4,471 magic damage to them and other nearby enemies. So this is an important skill as a tank, in my opinion. Make sure to level up that Undaunted. Next skill is from the Undaunted tree. Again, this is the first one. Again, it's Sanguine Altar. So this is the morph, obviously. This costs health. So this is a huge heal, burst heal for your teammates. Um, and this sacri it sacrifices your health to get a fountain and it applies minor life steal to enemies in the area healing you and your allies for 684 health every one second when damaging them and then allies in the area can activate the blood funnel synergy healing for 40 percent of their max health so this is a solid group heal um and when they activate the synergy it it basically restores their full full uh, full bar of health it's really really good and the life steal is really really nice so this is a nice heal for the group and this is something you can place um in every fight down on the ground and our first ultimate is ferocious leap and this will make sense once we get to the set y'all and you're going to really see why this is going to make sense um when we get to the next bar but this is one of the coolest ultimates in my opinion for dragonite this is in the draconic power uh skill tree and so what this is it launches yourself into enemy dealing 8814 flame damage to all enemies in the area knocking them back and stunning them for two seconds 
After leaping, you gain damage shield that absorbs 47,515 damage for six seconds. This portion of the ability scales with your max health. This damage shield is insane. And this is a great way to initiate a fight, um, maybe in ads or maybe in like a boss fight. It's really, really awesome. And it costs barely any ultimate. You can get this ultimate to be up like all the time with the Nord, with the traits that we're running on our armor and weapons. Like this can be up like all the time. And I love this ultimate. So I'm going to also go into some ultimates that you can switch out for some of these things if you're depending on the content that you're doing too. But this ultimate I love and you'll understand why we are choosing the damage shield one here once I get into these sets. But let's go ahead and get into the second bar. And as you'll see, you'll see more shields and more shields and more shields. The first skill on the second bar, and again, this is going to be another sword and board. So we're doing double sword and board. We're not doing sword and board and destruction staff. We're doing double sword and board. First skill is the green dragon blood. This skill is again in the draconic power tree. This is uh, morphed into green dragon blood. So this draws on your draconic blood and heals you for 37% of your missing health. Okay. You also gain major fortitude, major endurance, and minor vitality. Increases your health recovery, stamina recovery by 40% and healing received by 8% for 23 seconds. This is an insane heal. This, honestly, I use a lot of times if I'm in trouble, like if I'm low health or anything like that, I'll use this. This will heal you for a lot of health. But it's also nice to have active for that stam recovery as well. So this is something that I really, really like. Next is Igneous Shield. Igneous Shield is from the Earthen Heart tree. It is the third skill. Morph it into Igneous Shield. It doesn't start as that. But this is, you call to the Earth your defense, granting damage shield for your nearby allies that absorbs 3926 damage. Your own sh damage shield absorbs 9816 damage. This portion of the ability scales off your max health again. That's why we have high max health. You also gain major, uh, major mending, increasing your healing done by 16% for three seconds. This shield, again, is a shield that is just basically a global shield that allows your teammates to have a shield, you to have a shield. You'll see why, but this is something that is very simple to do as a beginner. It's not hard to do these, uh, to do this as a tank. Next is another shield. This is Spiked Bone Shield. This is also from the Undaunted line. So seriously, Undaunted is very important in this, y'all. Spiked Bone Shield is the fourth skill that you get. You surround yourself with a whirlwind of bones, gaining a damage shield that absorbs up to 14,254 damage for six seconds and returns 100% of that direct damage absorbed back to the enemy. This ability scales off your max health. An ally near you can activate the bone wall synergy, granting the ally up to and up to five other allies a damage shield equal to 30% of their max health for six seconds. This synergy is amazing, and the return damage is also really, really cool because this is the theme of this build we are returning damage and we are a thorn in the ass or in the side of an enemy we're just a pain in the ass to be honest like this is the point of this build okay again if you don't have these abilities right now like if you don't have the undaunted unlocked it's okay all right it's, you could switch that bone shield ability with hardened armor this is a skill that you can use as the first one in Draconic Power. If you don't have Bone Shield yet, you can just use this. This applies another uh, damage shield. And this also returns damage back to an enemy as you have it active. So this is an alternative for Bone Shield. But these other ones should not be that hard to um, unlock. These are the first three in the Sword and Board. This is the first Undaunted, the third Undaunted. Um, all it takes is doing some dungeons. Again, check out the guide below. But if you don't have Bone Shield yet, I would use Hardened Armor. The next skill is one of my favorite Dragonite skills. And this is Choking talons choking talons is in the draconic power tree again we've got a lot of skills in this draconic power but this is for uh, calls forth uh, talons dealing 3152 magic damage to enemies near you and immobilizing them for four seconds so this is basically a uh, like a global stun in a way um and the enemies that are hit are afflicted with minor maim, reducing their damage done by 5% for 10 seconds. This is huge when we when you are fighting uh, in dungeons or trials or whatever, because this will apply a nice debuff to them for your uh, teammates that can do more damage to them because they will have minor maim on them. So there's also a synergy as well um, called Ignite that deals 5,602 magic damage to all enemies held within them. So your allies can activate this synergy too. This is a nice damage over time, a nice stun um, and it's nice when you can root ads and stuff like that. You can't really root bosses, but you can root ads and that's nice. Um, some ads are not rootable. Um, and then once they've been CC'd too much, they have like a cooldown. This still can do damage though, but this is a solid ability to use in the beginning of a fight. 
And the last skill is Unrelenting Grip. This is a pull. This is a nice skill pull. And this is in the Ardent Flame skill line. This launches a fiery chain to grasp and pull an enemy to you, dealing 2,602 flame damage. Hitting the target grants you major expedition, increasing movement, uh, movement speed by 30% for 4 seconds. If the target cannot be pulled, you restore 100% of the ability's cost as Magicka, which is nice because then you don't lose your Magicka used for this. Now, this is really, really nice if you're on a boss and there's like a, a pretty big ad pull or something that spawns in a boss fight you can pull those ads to you and then that way your teammates can just damage everything at once this is a nice pull to have as a dragon knight and then the ultimate here and again this can be switched out and i'll go through the ultimates again here in a second but magma shell this is the ultimate from earthen heart um this is a pretty expensive ultimate and this uh Limits the incoming damage uh, to 3% of your max health and dealing 688 flame damage to nearby enemies each second for 12 seconds. Again, dealing uh, damage back to enemies. When activated, nearby allies can gain a damage shield for 100% of their max health for 10 seconds. This gives a massive shield to everyone, gives a massive shield to you, and also procs some things that we're using uh, on our sets. But this, again, is more of an emergency one, too. If like you're really low and you need to literally just take no damage, this is something that is really, really nice to use. But I will say that if you're doing trials or stuff like that and people ask you to have the Aggressive Warhorn Ultimate, I'd say you could put this in place of either Magma Shell or uh, Ferocious Leap. It's really up to you um, which one you want to use or which one you're more comfortable with. But that is definitely another Ultimate that you can use um, in um, high end game content to give your teammates a global buff. But definitely have this on backup as well whenever people ask if you can run this. Okay, let's go into the passives now and then we're gonna get into the sets and then how uh, this build actually is utilized. So I will say as well, I do have a passives guide in the description or the top of the screen that you wanna check out if you're new to passives. They are very important to your builds when you get past CP160. But in the Ardent Flame, we're not gonna use too many passives here. Um, these are all just unlocked due to the uh, PTS, but we're going to use World in Ruin. This increases the damage of flame area effect abilities by 6% and decreases the cost of your stamina poison abilities by 25%. That doesn't really matter, but just the top part. And then we're also going to use Combustion. Increases the damage of your burning and poison status effects by 50%. When you apply burning to an enemy, you restore 500 magicka. When you apply poison to an enemy, you restore 500 stamina. We are going to be applying burning status effects. Next, in Draconic Power, you're going to go with Iron Skin. This increases the amount of damage you block by 10%. You're going to get Burning Heart. While Draconic Power ability is active, you your healing received is increased by 12%. You're going to get Elder Dragon. This increases your health recovery by 5% for each Draconic Power ability slotted. Current bonus is 10%. And then the bottom part doesn't really matter too much, but increases the range of your melee attacks by 2 meters. This effect only applies to instant cast attacks with 5 meter range. And then Scaled Armor, this increases your spell resistance by 3,300. Next, we have Earthen Heart. Earthen Heart, we're going to go Eternal Mountain. Increase the duration of your Earthen Heart abilities by 20%, which is insane because we have an, an Igneous Shield and we have Magma Shell. You have Battle Roar, which when you cast an ultimate ability, you restore 52 health, 46 magic, and 46 stamina for each point of the ultimate's cost. We've got, and that is like, we're going to be generating tons of ultimate, y'all. Then we have Mountain's Blessing. When you cast an Earthen Heart ability, you and your group gain Minor Brutality for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon damage by 10%. If you're in combat, you also generate three ultimate. This effect can occur once every six seconds. You also have Helping Hands. When you cast a non-stamina costing Earthen Heart ability, you restore 990 stamina. This is a magic ability right here, so that will restore stamina when you use that. Then we go to One Hand and Shield or Sword and Board. We're going to use all of these. All these are important. Fortress, reduces the stamina cost of your one-handed shield abilities by 15%, reduces the cost of your blocking by 36%. Sword and Board, increases your weapon damage by 5% and the amount of damage you can block by 20%. Deadly Bash, improves your standard bash attacks, causing them to deal 1,500 more damage and cost 40% less stamina. Deflect Bolts, increases the amount of damage you can block from projectiles and range attacks by 14%. Reduce the movement speed penalty of Bracing, current penalty is 36%. Then we're going to go to Heavy Armor. Heavy Armor, you're going to use all of these. Resolve, increases physical and spell resistance by 362 for each piece of Heavy Armor equipped. Increases your health recovery by 4% for each piece of Heavy Armor equipped for Constitution, and you restore 108 magic and stamina when you take damage for each piece of Heavy Armor equipped. This can occur every uh, once every 4 seconds. You've got Juggernaut, which increases your health max health by 2% for each piece of Heavy Armor equipped. That's 10%. 
You got Revitalize, increase the max, uh, increase the Magicka and Stamina, your heavy attacks restore by 25%, and Rapid Mending, increasing your healing received by 8%. Now, in Medium Armor, we're only going to use Dexterity, Windwalker, and Athletics. Dexterity just increases your weapon critical for each piece of Medium Armor. Windwalker increases your Stamina Recovery by 4% per piece of Medium Armor, and reduces your Stamina Cost of your abilities by 2% by uh, per piece of Medium Armor, and then we've got Athletics, which increases movement speed uh, per piece of armor. Same thing as, basically, um, Windwalker. Then for Light Armor, again, we're only going to use three. Grace, Evocation, and Spell Warding. I don't know how, if I said that right for Evocation, but Grace has reduced the effectiveness of Snares on you per piece of Light Armor, so that's 4%, and reduces the cost of Sprint as well. You have Evocation, which is increases the Magic Recovery by 4%, reduces the Magic Cost for your abilities by 2%, this is all per light armor, so we have one piece of light armor on. And, and then spell warding, increase your spe uh, spell resistance by 363 for each piece of light armor equipped. Then for the guilds, in the fighter's guild, you're only going to use Banish the Wicked. You generate nine ultimate when you kill an undead, danger, or were werewolf. So if you kill a literally a pack of adds that are all like undead, you're going to get so much ultimate back. And then uh, for Undaunted, you're going to use both of these. Undaunted Command, activated synergy, restores 4% of your max health, stamina, and magicka, which is amazing. Undaunted Metal, increases your max health, stamina, and magicka by 2% per type of armor, heavy, medium, and light. You have equipped at 6%. That is really, really good, y'all. This, this passive is amazing, y'all, and you should definitely get this one. In the racial passives, again, we're going to have all the racial passes, passives in the Nord. We got Resist Frost, which increases your max health by 1,000 and cold resistance by 2310, and you gain immunity to chilled status effect. Stalwart, increases your max stamina by 1,500. When you take damage, you gain 5 ultimate. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. That is an amazing thing for your ultimate generation. That's what we were talking about. And then Rugged increases your physical and spell resistance by 3960. And then in Alchemy, you're going to get medicinal use. This allows you, when using potions, resulting effects last 30% longer. And so the potion that you can use, y'all, is Essence of Health. So now I'm going to go into the actual armor, y'all. The first armor set that we are using is the traditional armor set for, I think, beginner tanks or just general tanks in general. And this is Ebon. This will be five armor sets on the body. So we got Ebon Curse, Ebon Girdle, Ebon Sabatons, Ebon Greaves, and Ebon Gauntlets. Again, you guys do not need to upgrade all of this to yellow, okay? Purple will suffice, all right? You can upgrade your weapons to yellow and shields if you'd like, but the armor and stuff and the jewelry, you can definitely keep at purple. The jewelry, you could even keep at blue if you'd like, but this is just the PTS, so I'm just showing you basically as the gold armor. The Ebon Armor set is farmable in the Crypt of Hearts Dungeon 1 and 2. I use these for the armor pieces because this is really easy to farm, y'all. This is a pretty simple dungeon. You can do it on normal. It's pretty simple, y'all. So this is basically, it adds max health, max health. It adds 4% healing taken, and the 5-item uh, set bonus is really important. And that is increases your max health by 1,000 for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 mem uh, meters of you. This is really solid, y'all, for raids, for group content. This is something that a lot of people ask that people wear. But this is just an all-around great tanking set, and it's very easy to find and very easy to use you don't have to really do much to use it and then all the enchantments on the armor pieces right here are max health the reason i did max health is because again i just want to get that max health as high as i can and this is a beginner build again and i'm not expecting people to have prismatic glyphs or anything like that so i want to just go all max health here for the chest we're going reinforced for the girdle we're going sturdy for the boots are going sturdy for the greaves we're going infused um, and then for the gauntlets, we're going sturdy. These are the traits that we are going for these. Now, the new set from Markarth that we are using that is kind of the RP or kind of what this uh, this whole build is uh, like derived from or way or thought uh, the way I thought of this build is the Radiant Bastion set from Markarth. This is a zone set that you can farm doing any activities, delves, world bosses, um, doing quests, anything like that, chests, you can find these items by doing that. The jewelry you can find by doing hero storms. The weapons you can farm from world bosses, um, same with the shield as well because it's considered a weapon slot. So you can find them from those. Um, this, this set should not be too hard to farm. Again, you can also get this from guild traders as well since it is a zone set so that is nice but this set is really really cool y'all um once you get this farmed or once you get this set it's um it adds 
1,206 max health, 129 max, uh, or 129 weapon damage, 1,206 max health, and then deals 10% of all direct damage done to you back to the attacker up to 4,250 damage. So that is an awesome effect. And it's you want to note as well that this effect does not proc with your shield. So if you have your shield active, then uh, you will not actually deal the damage back because that shield that damage is being absorbed into your shield. But the beauty of this is is that when you don't have a shield active, or if you don't if you can't have a shield active, this will proc, and then a lot of your shields will deal damage back to the attacker. So this is what this whole build is basically thought of around. Um, I just really love this like whole thorn theme or like where you just deal damage back. I think it's a really, really cool set. And again, you shouldn't have any problem staying alive with this build, but I love this set and how it adds to this build. Now, for the monster set, this is kind of what the whole uh, build is designed around in, in general. Like, the Radiant Bastion set is kind of the whole theme of it, but the Monster Helm is kind of what the whole set is built around, and that is Infernal Guardians Guys. And this is the monster set that you get from City of Ash 1 Vet Dungeon. This is a very easy vet dungeon, and I... I recommend again doing this at cp 160 because then it will drop at the max level but this monster set you'll want light on the head and you'll want medium on the shoulders but this adds 1096 max magicka and the two item set is when you apply a damage shield to yourself or an ally you have a 50 percent chance to lob three mortars over two seconds at the furthest enemy from you that each deal 5,714 flave damage to all enemies within five meters of the blast. This effect can occur every six seconds. That is a huge proc chance, and it's something that happens all the time because you literally have one shield here. You've got two shields, three shields. You've got the magma sh uh, shell that adds a shield. You've got ferocious leap that adds a shield when you do this, and you're just going to be spamming this ability, so you're going to add a shield to you like literally every time you ultimate so all of that right there will proc the Infernal Guardian Helmet. And so this is something, again, that does flame damage, so you can apply the Burning Sass effect. It does AoE damage, which is nice, and it's something that just is, again, dealing damage back to enemies. You're like a thorn. You're a thorn in their side. And so I just love how that adds to this build, and that's basically what this build is built around. And with this, we're running Infused on the trait, we're running uh, Sturdy on the trait on the shoulders, and we're doing Max uh, Stamina on the shoulders. We're doing Max Magicka on the helmet. And again, that's just so we can keep our resources up as beginners or people that aren't playing tanks that often or trying it out for the first time. And the enchantments for the swords are Weakening Enchantments, which reduce target weapon damage and spell damage by 160 for 5 seconds on both of these. For the jewelry, we're running all healthy traits just because it's easy to get for jewelry. Again, this is a beginner build. Um, so we're doing healthy for the, tra uh, for the traits. And then for the enchantments, we're just doing bracing, and that reduces the cost of block for all of these as well. And I will say, y'all, set up these skills on your skill bar the way you like them. This is how I like them on my skill bar. It might work better for you to put them on different keybinds and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you kind of how this looks when you're actually using this. I'm in a public dungeon right now. The first thing I would do is either apply a shield. So one of your shields, either the obsidian shield or the bone shield. You can apply both of them at once if you'd like. But... That, you can do that before any fight, right? So you can do that. Um, you can also pop your green dragon blood. Um, but what I'll do is I'll pull this, and then I'm not really going to taunt any of these things. I'm just going to root them, apply a shield, and then if I leap, you'll see that the uh, mortars then proc. But basically, you just see I have a massive shield right now. And all i got to do is block, and then when my shields end, I can apply another shield. Um, I can taunt individual enemies if I want to taunt an enemy. So if I want to taunt this, I'll go taunt that. I can proc heroic slash which does my ultimate and then when you're waiting you can light attack as well this is something that will gain your ultimate back and look we almost have ferocious leap back ferocious leap is back we do it procs again and again like i said this is just something that will proc basically every time as this when you're using this build so if we go over to here i'm gonna drop this for just lifesteal i'm gonna pull people in with my chains i'm gonna talons them and i'm gonna make a shield I can literally just sit here if I want. I can literally just sit here if I if I choose to sit here. I mean, my resources are high. Um, if I get in trouble or anything like that, like right now if I'm standing in AoEs, I can use green dragon blood, heal my things, pop a shield, pop another shield. It just shoots mortars. My ultimate's up again. I leap. There we go. It knocks them back. It stuns them. I can block. 
Um, I can go around taunting certain enemies. Again, you can see where I have a massive shield right now from that leap, right? That shield just ended, okay? I'm gonna use obsidian shield now, and I'm gonna proc these mortars. I'm gonna use my bone shield now. These are all things, too, that allies can gain synergies from, too. So you're helping your teammates out with these shields because you're protecting them, you're protecting yourself, and you're giving them synergies. So the abilities you're gonna use a lot are gonna be your shields and your taunts. The roots are obviously there initially like that, but they can't be rooted infinitely. But your shields, taunts, and your roots are what you're gonna be doing. And after that, you can just block and you can gain ultimate. So I'm gaining ultimate back from this Plague Harpy. I've already got my uh, Ferocious Leap uh, back, so I've got that. Again, this is just for trash mobs, literally so simple. Just apply a shield, do your talons, apply another shield, do your leap, and then let mortars proc. It's just, it's insane, y'all. It's insane. And then light attack to get your ultimate back. So as you can see, we're doing a world boss now. Can't tell which one's the world boss, but it's right here. And you just apply shields, y'all. Apply shields. You can root when it's up again. And again, you'll hold your own. I mean, when you have DPS with you, they'll be able to damage everything down. You'll have healers as well with you. But it is nice, again, to have. And leap. Apply another shield. There goes the proc. Let me get rid of all of these things. All in all, y'all, as a beginner, so I'm going to de-aggro this right now because I don't want to sit here and take forever as I just do uh, thorn damage, like 10% of damage back to enemies. But all in all, you can see that this build is something that is very beginner friendly. Again, this is something that you'll be able to do and use this uh, tank on in most content. The sets are very accessible. They're not hard to get, and it's not a very hard thing to utilize. Again, when you're in a boss fight, taunt the boss, turn the boss away, and then just apply a shield, uh, root things, pull things into you, but really it's just light attacking back, make sure you block their attacks, make sure you break free, all that stuff, right? But the shields are going to be so beneficial to your teammates because, again, they're going to have a shield, they're going to have synergies, and then you're going to be able to do damage as well to help your team out, and they're going to be applying debuffs as well. So this is a build that I think a lot of people will probably have a lot of fun with. Um, it, I hope it gets more people into tanking because we need more tanks in ESO. We don't have enough. But let's go briefly into the champion points, and then I will go into the fashion in this video. So for the champion points, again, this is something that I've been playing around with. Again, you can try different things out, but I'm at 810 CP, so you can kind of calculate um, the ratios uh, you know, from my numbers that I have here. But for the tower, I'm going 50 points into Warlord. This reduces the cost of Break Free by 18.75%. Um, in the Lover, I go 50 Mooncalf, 40 Arcanist. This increases magic recovery and stamina recovery. I like having that when we're using uh, Magicka abilities like we are with the shields. You have 25 in Tenacity, which increases the magic and stamina. Your fully charged heavy attacks are stored by 6.63%. You also have got 45 in a tumbling, which reduces the cost of roll dodge by 17.45%. You got Shadow Ward, which has 60, which reduces the cost of block by 20.98%. 75 into Blessed, which increases your healing done by 14%. This is something that I'm still kind of playing around with. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I might drop that down eventually. But I do like this at 75. Then you got Physical Weapons Expert, increase the damage done with your light and heavy attacks by for two-handed, one-handed, and shield, dual-wield, and bow weapons, as well as in werewolf, uh, for 29.3%. Um, that's 60 points there. 73 into Master of Arms, increase your damage done with direct damage attacks, so this helps with the damage that you're doing back to the enemies. Um, then you got 40 into Thaumaturge, because we do have some AoE abilities here. Increase your damage done with damage over time by 16%. 10 Piercing, which increases your physical penetration by 1,003. Mighty, which increases your physical and poison disease damage done by 3.4%. Then we have Ironclad 70, reduces your damage taken against direct damage by 22.72%. Spell Shield, increases your spell resistance by 1465. Resistant, which increases your critical resistance by four, uh, 460. You've got Thin, Thick Skinned, reduces the damage taken from damage over time effects by 19.93%. You've got Hardy, 
which increases the damage uh, or reduces the damage taken from physical poison and disease damage by 12.5%. Elemental Defender reduces the damage taken from flame, frost, shock, and magic damage by 11.95%. We got 55 into Elemental Defender, 60 into Hardy, and 55 into Thick Skinned, and then none in the Lord Tree. And now we are going to get into the fashion to close out the video. If you're wondering how I got this, this is all of the Daggerfall Covenant motifs. You can get this from uh, PvP. Um, you can buy these on Guild Traders. So if you don't want to do PvP, you can buy them there. But you can get these from Coffers there. This is the whole motif set. I've got the Void Pitch um, die, which you earn from Vatistran Hollows, the new arena on the head right there. And there I've got Frozen Blood, which is given to you by doing the Hairstorm Delver achievement which is, um, if you right-click, you can view Achievement, and that is uh, doing um, Unhallowed Grave and Ice Reach on Veteran, and so you get the Frozen Blood die from that. Um, and then I've got um, Hollow Fang Cuora. I don't know how you say that, uh, but on the Shields, um, that is from doing the Scalebreaker Delver Achievement. So Scalebreaker is doing Moongrave Fang and Lair Marslock on Veteran as well for that but yeah that is this fashion right here you'll see it is literally the dire fall motifs you've got the dies um you can change these with multiple other dies that are easier to get as well but this is my cool little tank setup fashion here for the thorn in my side build now we'll say y'all as the patches keep updating i will update this build as you will see this build will also be on the website eventually so you can check it out there as well i'll have some text that goes into that and everything like that but again this build is designed to help beginners this is a beginner friendly build that does not require a ton of um, stress or anything like that again you can play this in most content and i hope that you guys enjoyed my first build leave me a comment below y'all if you guys enjoyed this tell me what you would change tell me uh what your feedback is of this and let me know what builds you'd like to see in the future but I do want to remind you again, if you ever want to watch me play live again, I stream on twitch.tv slash probably got this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can come there. You can find that link in the description. Um, you can ask any questions there as well. You can also join our Discord and guilds, the Brafia and the Necro Daddies and the Necro Papas. The uh, link to the Discord is below in the description. And make sure to check out the website at brawbygotthis.com. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at brawbygotthis. But I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons as well. Thank you for supporting me above and beyond. And if you'd like to become a patron, make sure to uh, check out the link below in the description. But until, uh, until next time, y'all, have faith, be great, and I'll see you on ESO.